Hi guys, it's Anilius and welcome to Baldur's Gate 3. Now this is still in, of course, the pre-release, so it's the early access version of the game. But I did want to go through some of the actual game mechanics that we basically got that we can deal with in here. Let me just make a minor change. Let me just turn off the music here for just a second before we really kick off. So music set to zero. Perfect. All right, like I was just saying, we're basically here in Baldur's Gate 3 in Early Access. In Baldur's Gate 3 in Early Access, there is a set number of races we can play as. Now, there's of course always a bit of an intro movie that starts running first, but what we can actually do in here, we can actually choose to play as an origin character as opposed to a custom character. Origin characters that are available at that particular point in time, or at least they will be available once the game releases, Astarian, uh, Lezel, Gale, Shadowheart, and Wile. Now, none of those currently are available in the early access, so you're going to have to do a custom character. You can, of course, choose the gender, male, female, used by these, of course, yeah, icons represent the genders. But one thing that's easily forgotten on this page is actually to name your character. So let me just call him, call him Sunelius here. Key thing to remember, since he's a man. So we're gonna go with a, a male, male character. Another thing to do on this page, if you're choosing a custom character, you can of course choose your background. Now I'm gonna come back onto those backgrounds later on. Firstly, I'd like to really look at the races. Now, in the early access, we've got a number of different races available. We've got the Elves, and within the Elves, we've got a sub-race called the High Elves. The High Elf, as you can see, gets an additional cantrip. We can actually choose what that cantrip should be, but we do get that free cantrip available to us. So even if you do not choose to study magic, you still get the cantrip here. Now, within the early access, the racial features are as follows. You get Keen senses, which means you're proficient with in perception. You get additional dexterity, so dexterity is plus two. Long short proficiency, short short proficiency, long bow, as well as short bow proficiency. You do get dark vision. Now that's up to 12 meters. 12 meters being approximately, what is it? Is it about 25, 30 feet? No, actually 30 feet is nine meters. So yeah, it's a little bit over that. Anyways. You do also get Fey Ancestry, which basically means you um, yeah, are, are really, really hard to basically be charmed. You get an additional or an advantage on your saving throw, and you cannot be put to sleep. Base racial speed is 9. Intelligence, it gets a boost of plus 1, similar to what you basically get here for Dex, but it's plus 2. Now, these are sub-race traits. We can, of course, change this. If you change to a Wood Elf, you do get an actual increased base speed. This, I believe, is the only character type with that increased base speed of 10.5 meters per turn. You do get Mask of the Wild, which actually gets you a proficiency on stealth, as well as a Wisdom of plus one, as opposed to the Intelligence of plus one. So those are the two sub-races of Elves. Now, in reality, of course, there's a third one, which is the Drow. The Drow is the third type of Elf you can choose. Base racial speed, Nine, so same to the high elf as you had there. Keen senses, like before. Dexterity, plus two, like before. But you do get plus one charisma. And instead of long sword, you get actually a rapier proficiency. You still get the short sword, but you don't get the longbow or short bow proficiency. You actually get the hand crossbow proficiency. And one key difference here is you get a superior dark vision as opposed to the normal dark vision, which was 12 meters. Once again, Fey Ancestry. And in this instance, you do also get a cantrip, but this one you cannot change. This is preset. So similar to the High Elf in that regard, uh, except, of course, the Charisma being plus one as opposed to the Intelligence being plus one. Now, there's two types of Drow. One that's more evil-minded, which is the Lord Sworn, and the other is the Seldarin Drow, which is more uh, on the good side. And again, you got the same characteristic, same cantrip, it's just the alignment type and probably also the interaction you get with the uh, with other characters. They will probably pick up on the fact that you're a certain type of drow as well. 
Okay, what other types of characters have we got? We've got our human characters. Now, humans are quite different compared to most of the others. Yes, you do get your base racial speed, which stands at 9. But in this particular instance, you get a plus 1 on every characteristic. So you get plus 1 on strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, as well as charisma. So where the others only get a plus 3 in total, a plus 2 and a plus 1 combined, here you get 6 pluses, but they are evenly spread along all the characteristics. All right, other races we come across is, of course, the Tiefling. And the Tiefling, again, has got some sub-races. We're starting with the Asmodeus Tiefling here. And they've got in the, in a couple of racial features. Firstly, a Hellish Resistance. Your blood is protected from flame, abysmal or otherwise. You gain a resistance to fire damage, taking only half damage from it. Great. Dark Vision, once again, 12. 12 meters, I mean. Um, Sub-racial traits. Now, these are, of course, very, very specific to the type that you choose here. We bet a base racial speed of 9. Then we get an intelligence of plus 1 and a charisma of plus 2. So those characters here, the uh, Asmodeus Tiefling, is relatively good to be a bard, uh, relatively good to be a sorcerer, but also because, of course, he's got intelligence, he's pretty good to be a wizard, potentially, as well. Yeah, so those kind of things come in quite nicely here. If we were to switch over to the... Uh, uh, really hard to pronounce, but... Mophistophilus Tiefling. Apologies if I mispronounced that. Subracial tra uh, tra traits here are slightly different. Base racial speed, 9. It's the same as the previous one. So I'm assuming that the next one, assuming there's a third Tiefling type, will be different. Intelligence, plus 1. Charisma, plus 2. So very similar to the previous one, but you get a slightly different cantrip. So on the previous one, you got here the Tomater... Tomar uh, sorry thaumaturgy as the uh, cantrip you get here, which gives you an advantage on intimidation as well as performance checks. Whereas with the next one where we just looked at, you get the mage hand, which is great to manipulate different objects. Now there is a third one here. And this one deviates slightly. Yes, you still get your charisma booster here, which stands at plus two. But instead of intelligence, you get a strength booster here. So the other two had intelligence, this one's strength. Base racial speed is still the same. So I'm, I'm wondering why is that a sub-race trait and why don't they put it in the racial features? The same with the charisma. But again you get the same cantrip here. So there's three types of tieflings which all have charisma boosters, all have the same base racial speed of nine. Uh, yeah the key difference here is whether they get intelligence or strength and potentially the cantrip being different as well. Okay, that's the tiefling for you. Uh, then the Gityanki. The Gityanki is yeah, only available in, uh, in one type. It's basically got a basic racial speed of 9, intelligence plus 1, and then strength plus 2. It's a bit of an odd combination because, of course, something of the mind and something of the body. But, yeah, not bad. Still, um, strength will make you, of course, a great fighter. Uh, light armor proficiency. You don't necessarily see that on many actual races as such, so... We didn't see it on the Tiefling, Drow, or Elf. Not even a human. But we do see, of course, light armor proficiency and medium armor proficiency here. Uh, we do get short sword proficiency as well as long sword proficiency, similar to, of course, the uh, original types of Elves that we looked at. We do also get great sword proficiency, but no ranged weapon proficiencies. But you do happen to get a cantrip, which in this instance is not a magical cantrip, it's a psionics cantrip. So the fact that this is psionics kind of indicates that maybe in the future there will be a psionics class made available, but for now it's just, yeah, a cantrip that we can use here as a racial feature. Dwarves. Again, there are several different subrace types. Um, racial features. Firstly, of course, you get a dwarven resilience, as well as constitution plus two. Um, resilience here basically gives you an advantage on saving throws against poison, and you have resistance to poison damage. Okay, battle axe proficiency, great. Hand axe proficiency, light hammer proficiency, warhammer proficiency, as well as dark vision for 12 meters. Uh, you do get dwarven toughness for the gold dwarf, which we currently see here, which gets you an additional hit point uh, for every level, I believe it is. Uh, your hit point maximum increased by one and increased by one again every time you gain a level. So yeah, it's a one per level. Base racial speed spent at 
So that's a reduction from the earlier ones we saw, which was 10.5 for the Wood Elf, I believe it was. And then also for most other races, we saw the base speed being 9. This one's got 7.5. We do get for this particular sub race a Wisdom booster here. If I were to change over to the Shield Dwarf, what we see here is still the same base racial speed of 7.5. We do get a Strength booster here of plus 2. So here we had basically Wisdom plus 1. Whereas here we get strength plus two. So these guys are really, really proficient to be a barbarian or a fighter. Good combination, constitution as well as strength. This type here, the shield dwarf, does get uh, armor proficiency for light armor and medium armor. Now, I'm kind of thinking, if you really, really want to be a tanky character, you probably want to have heavy armor proficiency as well. Probably you get that through... Uh, the yeah the fighter class already I haven't checked that yet but we'll come across that later um, so the gold dwarf and the shield dwarf two types of dwarfs at our disposal different dress slightly nothing major but okay let's look at the other smaller races here so we got the gnomes base ratio speed of 7.5 similar to of course the dwarf here we get a intelligence plus two Nomen coming. We basically get an advantage on intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saving throws. And for the forest gnome, we get a dexterity plus one, as well as dark vision, plus we basically get a spell that is basically speak with animals. Nice. So this would be a great wizard kind of character that we can make with this forest gnome, I guess. They master magic and craftsmen. Okay. Then, of course, we got the Deep Gnome, which basically gets you the same base racial speed. Intelligence plus two once again. Gnome Cunning, great to have, always good to have. Dexterity plus one. So in, in that sense, the Dexterity plus one is the same for both. But you do get superior Dark Vision. You don't get a cantrip, but you do get Stone Camouflage. It actually helps you, of course, when you want to basically uh, use your stealth uh, to your advantage here. Rock Gnome is the third type we can actually find here, which gets you base racial speed again of 7.5, intelligence plus 2, Gnome Conning, constitution plus 1, dark vision 12 meters, not bad. Artificed, artificial Slower, which basically gets you an advantage on history checks. History checks, I believe, are based on uh, intelligence, so really nice one to see. So three types of gnomes, the rock gnome, the forest gnome, and the deep gnome. Question, of course, is which one do you prefer? I think this one's great for yeah a lot of things, but this one seems a little bit more superior. Unless, of course, you really want to have the other option that we just talked about is the, the cantrip that you get here. Whereas this one... Yeah, because you've got constitution as opposed to dexterity, you get potentially more health. Something to look into. Okay, then we got the halflings. They are lucky. With their luck, they basically get the ability to do a... Um, if you roll a 1 for an attack roll, an ability roll, or a saving throw, you can re-roll the die, and you must use the new roll that you get, even if it's, again, a 1. Makes sense, I guess. They're also brave, which actually makes them hard to intimidate. So you can advance on saving throws against being frightened. For dexterity, you get a plus two. Uh, yeah, ability checks. Then you got naturally stealthy for the lightfoot halfling. So the lightfoot halfling, naturally stealthy, you got proficiency on your stealth checks. Then you get your base racial speed, again being 7.5, similar to before. And then we get Charisma plus 1. Okay, Charisma plus 1. Maybe good for a sorcerer. Uh, but yeah, the fact that you got Dexterity so high actually would serve you quite well if you basically were to play a rogue. Yeah, so lots of options there. Then of course we got the Strongheart Halfling. Same racial features. But then here in the sub race traits we do see strong heart resilience we get an advantage on saving the throws against poison and also we get some resistance to the poison damage same base racial speed but we do get constitution plus one 
So as you can see, there's only two types of halflings, the Lightfoot and the Strongheart. Let's move over to the last one that we actually haven't touched yet. That's the Half Elf. Now, Half Elves, there are three types. It's the Wood Half Elf, the Draw Half Elf, or the High Half Elf. So High Half Elf, same cantrip. We basically are able to choose as we could for the Half Elf itself. But what you do get here, you get a booster on Charisma. So you get plus two Charisma. And then you can choose what uh, where, you, where you want to put more points in. But you can only do that with plus one on there. So you can basically really make this into a, uh, yep, a sorcerer potentially. Uh, with a good instant intelligence as well as dexterity or constitution. And then a dexterity, whatever combination you want to choose. Quite nice to be able to choose that as such. Wood Half Elf. They are a fleet of foot. So they, again, they are, are really, really fast in terms of being able to move through the field. Charisma, the same. Oh yeah, Mask of the Wild. Again, gives you proficiency in stealth. Um, bearing in mind, of course, proficiencies do not stack. Um, again, we can, of course, choose dexterity or intelligence, whatever we want to do. And of course, then the draw half elf. Again, same as before. Charisma plus two. Dark vision. So you don't get support superior dark vision, just basic dark vision. And unfortunately only the, the base racial speed as being nine meters. Fey ancestry here. So again, against saving, uh, saving throws for sleep and so forth. So or we cannot be put to sleep, uh, but again, we got a saving throw against being charmed as such. Okay, that's pretty much the races. Let's just pick the half elf here as an, as an example. So we're fleet of foot. We've got the Mask of the Wild. If I were to then choose a class, let's choose to start off by looking at the Rogue. Of course, the Rogue itself would typically get a proficiency option on Stealth. With Stealth, Skill, and on the blah, 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 etc., etc. If we then were to look at the skills associated with that, as you can see, we got Stealth here is already granted from the race, so I don't need this to choose Stealth again. It's to my advantage that I already have it, so that's great. Sly of Hand, I can of course choose. I can choose Persuasion here, uh, Acrobatics, Athletics. So there's lots of different options available here. Perception might potentially be a good one to have. Uh, but yeah, for the Rogue, really, you do get this list here. You get Dexterity, Saving Throws, Proficiency, Intelligence, Saving Throw, Proficiency, Light Armor, Simple Weapons, Hand Crossbow, Longsword Proficiency, Rapier Proficiency, Short Sword Proficiency. Now, you do lose out on some things if you happen to, of course, have. Uh... Oh, wow. OK, um, we got expertise in some of them as well, as you can see. Um, but what I was about to say is if you basically got certain features here in the class as well as in the race at the same time, you kind of lose the benefit of actually some of those as such. But Rogue, great in being stealthy and so forth. Uh, quite a useful character, I'd say. So we've got expertise here in Sly of Hand. Dexterity stands at 16 at the moment, so that's quite nice. Um, then, of course, Stealth also, we get a booster on that. Whereas we've got a lot of proficiencies here, as you can already see. We can, of course, all modify those proficiencies to go to our scales and basically choosing what it is we want them to be. Again, the same with the expertise here. Sly of hand and, and stealth, really good ones to have that expertise in. Um, skills without proficiency, again, we can influence that slightly. At least the ones will be chosen on here as such. So if I wanted to remove the deception here, you see that list on the left, it does modify itself. Uh, some of them might actually have a automatic one on there because maybe of the recognized DTs. Uh, but I don't actually have that chosen here, do I? Oh, inherited skills from being an acolyte. So that's the option that we saw at the very beginning. So one of the things we can, of course, do, we can actually change the actual chosen one in there. Uh, we'll have a look at, at that later. Anyway, for now, Rogue, great with, of course, dexterity. Sorcerer does rely heavily on, in this instance, the... Uh, ability to basically manifest our charisma. So charisma is the key driver for that. And as you can see, you can actually choose multiple cantrips, you can choose multiple spells, but you're fit. Uh, yeah, you're basically stuck with these spells and cantrips throughout. But when you level up, you can of course maybe potentially add an extra slot on here, 
or potentially even you might be able to change one of these on here as well. Yeah, it all depends what you've actually set things to. So this particular class has got constitution saving throw proficiency, charisma saving throw proficiency, dagger proficiency, quarterstaff proficiency, light crossbow proficiency. So great combination. So close up, good for defense, quarterstaff potentially, well, still for attack. Um, and of course, a bit of range to do the light crossbow. If I were to combine this potentially with, of course, the drow, I would actually get the hand crossbow option as well. So yeah, there's some options available here. There's a subclass here as well. So in this instance, we basically got our wild magic subclass here. We could choose the chronic bloodline. And then of course you can choose which type you wanna have on there. But as you can see, there's a couple of different uh, subclass uh, features available here. So Draconic Resilience is the hit points. And of course, here we get Draconic Resilience here, which gives me, uh, you, when you aren't wearing your base armor is base, sorry, when you aren't wearing armor, your base armor class is 13. So you do get that little benefit already to start off with, as opposed to having a base armor class of 10, it's 13 here straight away. And if you, of course, combine that with the dexterity here, you will ultimately see that your armor class will jump up in this instance to 15 because we basically do that plus two on top of that through dexterity. Different types of uh, draconics types gives you different uh, yeah, affinities to different types of uh, damage as such. Be that lightning, be that fire, be that... Yeah, so up to you to choose, of course, acid, potentially. Yeah, but yeah, you do get some resistance potentially to those as well. So Draconic or the Wild Magic, that's the choice you've got here. With the Wild Magic, you do occasionally see some surges coming there. And of course, you've got your Tides of Chaos. Again, saving throws can basically help mitigate that as such. Warlocks, again, that's one that is based upon Charisma. Looks a bit more adventurous than the, the sorcerer. Yeah, different robes. This one's got full robes, same as the wizard in reality. Sorry, I should see a wizard here. Come up, where's the wizard? There we go. So yeah, robes, slightly different kind of robes, but yeah, still robes. Whereas the warlock has got more like a jacket and trousers on in this example here. Um, and again, there's different subtypes. There's the fiend, there's the great old one. And, and let's have a look at the actual features of that. Dark one's blessing. When you reduce a hostile creature to zero points, this gift from your patron grants you four temporary hit points. So it's a temporary hit points you get through this. Whereas the great old one basically gets you mortal reminder. When you land a critical hit against creature, that creature and one nearby enemy are frightened until the end of their turn. So for the class itself, you get warlock spell slots. You see already a couple of them listed here. So cantrips, again, some spells here. Wisdom saving throw proficiency, charisma saving throw proficiency, light armor, and simple weapons. So yes, a bit more martial potentially as well, but great to be able to play around with that if you wanted to. Again, back to the classes. Uh, so that's the warlock. The wizard then, that's one that's really intelligence focused. So in this example, we see the intelligence already having been boosted because of course it redistributes the points slightly for us. So that's quite useful. We do see of course some cantrips, some spells here. And then we see we got prepared spells. So even though you got multiple spells at your disposal, yeah, so you got these six spells at your disposal, you've only prepared four of those. Okay, so yes, you can only prepare a number of them. Cantrips, you can cast pretty much as often as you want, but the spells here, yeah, that's a bit more of a different story. You do get for this particular class here, Arcane Recovery. You can replenish expanded spell slots whilst out of combat. Nice feature to have. Um, level one spell slots are unlocked. That's basically a class feature. Okay, that speaks for itself. Um, intelligence saving throws, wisdom saving throws, dagger proficiency, quarter staff, and light crossbow. So very, very similar in that regard to the sorcerer. But sorcerers and wizard are quite different. Okay, no different subtypes as of yet. Now, once the game is fully released, uh, Sorry, actually there are some sub types you can choose, but I think it's only at level two you can do that. Um, does it specify that here? No, it does not. Um, no, it doesn't say that here, but yeah, at level two, you can actually choose your, your school that you want to focus in on. 
evocation, conjuration, div div divination, etc., etc. For now, at the level one, you don't get that option as such. Next one is the row, uh, sorry, the ranger here. It's really more focused upon typically uh, ranged attacks. This is, it clearly says, rangers are unrivaled scouts and trackers honing a deep connection with nature in order to hunt their favorite prey. Favorite enemies. In this instance, you can actually choose who your favorite enemy should be. Is that, are you acting as a bounty hunter, a mage breaker? And each of those, of course, gets its own specific sub uh, type that you get on there. So in this instance, the first one is basically game proficiency in investigation. Creatures you hit with ensnaring strike either ranged or melee, have disadvantages on their saving throws. Keeper of the Veil, basic proficiency on Arcana. Mage Breaker, proficiency in Arcana. And you do get the True Strike Cantrip, which gives you an advantage on attack rolls. Great to have. Ranger Knight, which is proficiency in history, and you get armor proficiency for heavy. Disadvantages to that, you typically lose quite a lot of dex through that dexterity so that might not necessarily work in your favor sanctified stalker you basically get proficiency in religion you get this sacred flame cantrip which deals 1d8 radiant damage wisdom is your spell casting ability for the cantrip the cantrip okay so i do believe as a ranger you do get some spells anyway so yes we got one here already uh you get strength saving throw proficiency, dexterity saving throw proficiency, light armor proficiency, medium armor proficiency, shield proficiency. You don't get that on many of the classes anyway, so it's good to have. Simple weapon proficiency and martial weapon proficiency. Okay, now you do, of course, get some nature explorer options here. So basically you can choose to be a beast tamer. You can cast a find familiar spell uh, without expanding a spell slot. Great. Urban tracker, which basically gives you a sly of hind proficiency. Uh, Wasteland Wanderer, which basically gets you uh, resistance to cold damage. You got one for fire here, as well as for poison. So three different elements. You can get a you can get a resistance against. Great. So that's this particular class. So let's have a look at the next one, the Paladin. The Paladin is a different one. You basically get Wisdom saving uh, throws as well as Charisma. So those are your two main uh, attributes you want to focus on. So in this instance, that's the Wisdom and Charisma. Uh, light Armor Proficiency, Medium Armor Proficiency, Heavy Armor Proficiency, Shield Proficiency, Simple Weapon Proficiency, Martial Weapon Proficiency, Channel Oat Charges is one. Uh, you got actions here, which basically is, in this instance, a lay on hands and a divine sense. Very, very short duration, so that's a bit of a pity. This is more useful lay on hands, allows to heal some of your party members. And again, there is a healing a radiance, which you can basically cast here as the subclass feature, which in this instance, basically in a three meter radius, helps people nearby get uh, yeah, healing benefits. Out of the Ancients is this particular one's key feature set. Out of uh, Devon, Devon, so Devon, Devotion, sorry, pardon my French, a bit tired. Um, Holy Rebuke is the one that you get instead of the Radiance of Healing. Nothing else seems to change in reality. Out of the Ancients and Out of Devotion. So you choose between those two. You do get a different dress sense, as you can see. So more green and yellow as opposed to the blue and white. Fighters then, the one I talked about previously. Now you can choose a fighting style here. Are you basically going to be focusing on archery, defense? Uh, yeah, you get an extra point of armor. Great. Uh, dueling. You get extra damage with your weapons. Great, okay. Great weapon fighting. Um, Two-handed weapons, that is. Protection. Okay, that seems to be quite useful. When you have a shield, impose disadvantage on an enemy who attacks one of your allies when you are within 1.5 meters. You must be able to see the enemy. This is a reaction. Toggle a reaction during your turn. It will automatically execute when needed. Okay. And then, of course, the two weapon fighting. So you can choose between these different types. It gives you different play styles, so to speak. Uh, so there's no different 
types, it's just different styles you can choose from. Um, in this instance, I get an action here. None of these really change. But yeah, we basically got our long list here of strength, constitution, light armor, medium armor, heavy armor, shield proficiency, simple, as well as martial weapons. Good mix. Then we got the druid here. Now, I do believe that in the final release, we do get different types of druids. We can, I'm not sure if it's choose at level one or choose at a later level. Uh, they channel, of course, the elements of nature. Class features, level one spell slots. Great, we've got those. Wisdom and intelligence saving throws, proficiency. Light armor, medium armor, shield, club proficiency, dagger, javelin, mace, quarterstaff, scimitar, sickle, and spear. List of spells available, and of course we can choose which ones we want to work with here. Um, cleric has got some affinity that's similar to the druid. They both can do healing. Uh, actually, the bard can do some healing as well. Um, I think even the range, uh, sorry, the, the druid and the cleric, and as well as the paladin can do healing. Um, the cleric, you can choose a subclass, so you can choose the life domain or the light domain or the trickery domain. Now, do bear in mind that that list will expand itself once the final release takes place. For now, these are the ones to go for. So for the light domain, we can, of course, choose our DT. Something that matches what we're basically working with here. Um, and that basically does get you different uh, types of affinities that you can work with. Subclass feature, that's of course dependent on the type that you've chosen, interpreted type of the cleric. You get your level spots, um, level one spells, you get wisdom as well as charisma, saving throws, light armor proficiency, medium armor, as well as shields, and then simple weapon proficiency. We can of course choose to basically have the light domain instead. Gets me a slightly different set of, uh, I think it's the cantrip here that's different. Yes, you can light here. Then you get your wording flare and domain spells. Whereas if we basically go to the previous, the life domain, it did say we got heavy armor proficiency as well as the disciple of life, which gets you, when casting a healing spell, the target regains additional hit points equal to two plus the spell's level. Quite useful, uh, particularly if you do heavier healing later on. Trickery domain, you do get the same as before, but of course you get domain spells that are different um, that's pretty much it, I think. That's the key bits. You do, of course, you get the blessing of the trickster as an extra bit in here. So there's three types available now. There will be more in the life deployment. Bards. No subtypes, but you can do. You can actually choose your starting instrument. Uh, I'm not sure how many instruments you can actually carry with you, but uh, let's have a look at the stats here. Level 1 spell slots are unlocked, Dexterity saving throw, Charisma saving throw, Light Armor proficiency, Simple Weapon proficiency, and Crossbow proficiency, Long Sword proficiency, Rapier proficiency, the Short Sword proficiency, Musical inst Instrument proficiency. And of course in an action in this instance we can do Bardic Inspiration. Um, I, I'm not sure, is there an actual limit on how often we can do that? That is one thing I actually haven't seen. <laughs> Inspire an ally to go beyond their capability with your performance. It is does have a dot on there, doesn't it? Yes, there we can expand it. Uh, they can add a 1d6 bonus to their next attack throw, ability check, or a saving throw until a long rest takes place. Okay. Yeah, okay, fine. We can live with that. Um... And then, of course, here we got the Barbarian, which is, of course, getting strength, as well as Constitution saving throws, Light Armor proficiency, Medium Armor proficiency, Shield, Simple Weapon, as well as Martial proficiency. So those are really the key bits. Barbarians, you do get armored, on so unarmored defense. Your body is more resilient uh, as any armor. While not wearing armor, you can add your Constitution modifier to your armor class. Constitution is typically high for you anyways, and you probably want to basically combine it with some good decks anyways as well. But key again here is strength. So you do want to basically create a nice mix of different things here. That's pretty much the current class selection. Now I do know that there is going to be an additional class of monk available on the actual final release, which is happening at the start of 
August 2023. In terms of the races, we do get an additional race, which I believe is the Dragonborn. Is that the one what it's called or Dragon? Uh, but yeah, we do get an additional racial option at our disposal there as well. Hope this information is useful to you. But uh, yeah, for now, thanks for watching. Have a good one. Bye-bye.